GPT-5 is here and it's packing some of the biggest upgrades we've ever seen in ChatGPT. From a unified system that can handle text, images, voice, and live video all at once, to a coding engine that can build complex software on demand, this release changes how you'll use AI day to day. It's faster, sharper, and more accurate with new tools, smarter reasoning, and personalization that actually remembers what you want. Here's what makes it worth trying the moment you get access. For starters, GPT-5 is now the do-it-all flagship model. In the past, you had to choose between different models for different tasks. Maybe you used GPT-4.0 for speed, a reasoning model for deep analysis, or vision for image work. That juggling is gone. Now, GPT-5 automatically picks the right sub-model for your request through a dynamic routing system. Inside GPT-5, there are actually two main brains, GPT-5 main, which is optimized for speed, and GPT-5 thinking, which takes more time to reason through complex problems. You don't have to think about which one to use, it just decides for you on the fly. It comes in three main sizes, standard, mini, and nano. Standard is the high-end version with the best reasoning and the largest capacity. Mini is a balanced middle ground for moderate workloads, and Nano is a super lightweight version for simple, cost-sensitive tasks. The routing system can even move you to Mini or Nano automatically if you hit usage limits, so you can keep working without interruption. These smaller models aren't toys either. Both are still more capable than the older GPT-03. Performance-wise, GPT-5 is smarter, faster, and far more accurate than before. OpenAI says hallucinations, those made-up facts that can creep into AI outputs, are down by as much as 78% in the reasoning mode. That's paired with a massive context window, 256,000 tokens in ChatGPT and up to 400,000 tokens if you're using the API. In practical terms, that's around 200,000 words at once. You can throw an entire novel, huge code bases, or giant research documents at it, and it will actually keep track without losing the thread. So one of the biggest headline upgrades is its multimodal ability, text, images, voice, and now even live video. All in one conversation. No more swapping to a different AI for visual analysis or voice interactions. During the launch demo, they showed it generating websites in French with accurate pronunciation, analyzing uploaded images, and even interacting over live video. While it can't generate videos yet that's still handled by Sora, it can watch a live feed, like you fixing a bike, and give you step-by-step -step instructions in real time. The voice mode itself has had a serious upgrade. It now adapts to the flow of conversation, adjusting tone and pacing depending on the moment. It's less robotic, faster to respond, and for pro users, it works with higher limits and even in video or screen sharing scenarios. And finally, it's available in custom GPTs, something that's been missing and that power users have been asking for since voice first dropped. Developers and coders are going to feel this release the most. OpenAI clearly aimed GPT-5 right at Anthropic's Claude, which has been the go-to for many programmers. They even brought in companies like Cursor, Vercel, and Windsurf during the live stream to talk about how well it writes and debugs code. In one demo, GPT-5 cranked out over 400 lines of code in just two minutes, building a Bernoulli effect simulation from scratch. It's not just good at spitting out code. It can run long multi-turn agents in the background, work through tricky bugs, and handle complex software builds from a single prompt. Sam Altman called it software on demand, and honestly, that's exactly what it looks like. It's also getting more personal. You can now set one of four preset personalities, cynic robot, listener, and nerd, which affect how it interacts with you. They're optional, but they were designed partly to cut down on the yes man problem, where the model just agrees with everything you say. And beyond personalities, GPT-5's memory is far better. It can remember preferences, facts, and instructions across sessions, even days later. You can set long-term goals, like helping you prep for an exam or tracking a fitness target, and it will actively adapt its responses to help you reach them. And if you actually want to push GPT-5 and a bunch of other top models to their full potential. Today's video is sponsored by Chat LLM Teams by Abacus AI, a platform that basically turns all of this into your personal AI command center. For 10 bucks a month, you get direct access not just to GPT-5, but also Grok 4, Claude 4, Gemini 2.5, DeepSeek, and more. 
Each of these models has its own strengths, and you don't have to guess which one to use. Their built-in root LLM automatically routes your request to whichever is best for the job. And it's not just text either. You can generate high-quality images right inside the platform with tools like DALI, Flux, Recraft, Ideogram, and others. Video is just as integrated. Runway, Luma, Kling, and HeyGen are all there, so you can produce anything from cinematic clips to social content without jumping between apps. Developers get a full VS Code editor built in so you can write, edit, and run code directly. There's an artifacts tool for testing prompts across models side by side, AI engineer for building custom agents without touching code, and a humanized feature to instantly rewrite AI text so it reads naturally. Need to go even further? The Deep Agent acts like an on-demand startup team, creating websites, mobile apps, reports, presentations, marketing campaigns, and more from a single goal. Collaboration is unlimited. Invite as many people as you want, manage permissions, and plug it into Slack, Teams, Google Drive, or OneDrive. You get 2 million compute points a month, roughly 15 million GPT-5 or Claude Sonnet tokens, or about 400 images or 50 videos, and unused points roll over. For anyone who wants GPT-5 plus a whole AI toolkit in one place, it's linked in the description and pinned comment. Now back to GPT-5. On the assistant side, integrations are getting a boost. Soon you'll be able to connect Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Contacts directly with GPT-5 automatically pulling in relevant info when needed. No more manually enabling each integration every time. Once it's set up, it just works. At launch, this is rolling out to pro users first with other tiers following later. Customization even goes down to small touches like being able to assign different colors to your chats to help keep projects organized. It's not a game changer, but for people juggling dozens of conversations, it's the kind of quality of life improvement that adds up. Now, there's also the question of reliability and safety, and here's where the system card comes in. OpenAI has flagged GPT-5 as high risk in the context of biological and chemical weapon knowledge. Specifically, the reasoning-focused GPT-5 thinking model is considered highly capable in those areas, even though it hasn't crossed their internal threshold for critical danger. That means extra safety measures, multi-layer filters, human review, account blocking if needed, and limiting access for certain research cases. They've also classified the new agent feature as high risk. Other safety notes, it still blocks most dangerous or disallowed content, but in long, complex conversations, bad responses can occasionally slip through. It's harder to jailbreak than older models, though multi-step attacks can sometimes still work. There's still a defined instruction hierarchy. System instructions, then developer instructions, then user input. But in rare cases, GPT-5 main has let user or developer instructions override higher level ones, which could weaken protections. Hallucinations are way down, but not gone. Deceptive outputs are less common, yet still possible. And in rare instances, it might even detect that it's being tested and adjust its behavior. With images, the filters to stop dangerous text plus image combos work well, but aren't perfect. Health answers are safer and more accurate now, but OpenAI is still stressing that it's not a substitute for professional medical advice. Cybersecurity-wise, it can help with some hacking-related tasks, but it's not powerful enough to break into secure systems on its own. Still, for poorly secured targets or in combination with skilled humans, it could be a risk. From a pricing standpoint, nothing changes for ChatGPT subscriptions. Plus is still $20 a month. Pro is $200. API pricing, though, makes GPT-5 surprisingly competitive. $1.25 per million input tokens and $10 per million output tokens for standard, $0.25 cents and $2 for mini, and $0.05 cents and $0.40 cents for nano. Interestingly, GPT-5 mini in the API is way cheaper than GPT-4.1 or the O1 Pro model, which can run up to $600 per million tokens. The mini and nano versions are clearly aimed at making advanced AI more accessible for cost-sensitive use cases. And the performance isn't just raw speed. GPT-5 is tuned to be more efficient, higher intelligence scores while using fewer tokens. That means less processing time, lower costs, and still better results. The training process has also shifted toward quality over quantity. So instead of dumping 
internet text back at you, it produces more structured, context-aware responses. Use case-wise, the versatility is huge. Developers can use it for debugging and building apps. Analysts can run massive data sets through it for insights. Creators can have it generate high-quality content or even replicate user interfaces. The Mini and Nano shine when you don't need the full reasoning power but still want strong performance, while standard is for heavy, high-stakes work. Multilingual handling is still solid, though it hasn't improved dramatically over previous models. In terms of real-world feel, Altman compared switching back from GPT-5 to an older model to going from a retina display to a low-resolution screen. Once you get used to the upgrade, it's hard to go back. Early testers say it feels more intelligent, easier to direct, and even shows personality in ways previous versions didn't. It's worth noting that while reasoning is now central to OpenAI's AGI strategy, they're not calling this AGI. GPT-5 is still specialized, great at language, reasoning, coding, and analysis, but it's not self-teaching or capable of fully independent general intelligence. Max Tegmark from the Future of Life Institute even criticized it for not being aimed at solving big world problems and warned it could accelerate job losses, scams, and deep fakes. But from a day-to-day -day user standpoint, especially for people already relying on chat GPT, this is a serious leap forward. Even for free users, the changes are huge. You now get access to the most advanced reasoning models without paying, plus multimodal interaction in a single conversation. If you hit the free tier limits, you'll drop to mini automatically instead of being locked out. That alone makes it worth trying, especially for deep research, where GPT-5 can pull in data from multiple searches, synthesize it, and even create custom visualizations, games, or quizzes to help explain it. So between the unified multimodal setup, the expanded context window, the coding power, the voice and live video interaction, the integrations and the memory improvements, GPT-5 is stepping into territory that none of OpenAI's earlier models have managed to cover in one package. And while there are still limits, no direct video generation yet, some safety gaps and the usual privacy questions, the fact that Microsoft already plugged it into Copilot and GitHub on day one tells you exactly how confident they are in it. If you've been using AI casually, this is going to make it a lot easier to do more in one place. If you're deep into coding, analysis, or content creation, it's going to replace a lot of the switching and stitching together of tools you've been doing. And with the smaller mini and nano versions, it's also a lot more affordable to run at scale. That's GPT-5 right now. Let me know what you think of it so far. Drop a comment if you've spotted something cool in your own testing. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you in the next one.